premises of the energy reform are three. Promote economic growth, have uh, social inclusion, and be responsible with the environment. In order to translate those three main components of the energy reform, we have devised the Energy Power Act, which basically incorporates clean power to the energy mix. And clean power, it's basically renewables, plus clean technologies, which are the use of uh, fossil fuel uh, technologies, but including carbon capture use and storage in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions of the use of fossil fuels. In Mexico, we have implemented the market model for all the segments of the value chain in the energy sector. And the first challenge is how to galvanize and uh, strengthen the market model in Mexico. The second is how can we continue uh, strengthening the regulatory uh, segment or the implementation of the market model in the energy sector. And third, to have a consistent and stable policy that includes these targets that we have set forth for the mid and the long run. The first goal that was established in the energy transition law is for 2018. Mexico has to have 25% of the total generation of electricity from clean sources. And uh, with preliminary information, for the first semester of 2018, we have reached at almost 24%. And we expect that at the end of the year, we will have reached the goal for 25% for clean energies in Mexico. So the first goal established in the energy transition law, I believe that it is already accomplished in Mexico. The first auction was about $47, uh, the average price. Um, which was in itself uh, highly competitive. The second auction uh, gave out a price, uh, a ballpark $33, because I'm not looking at the data, but $33 a megawatt. Now, the third auction came out with pondered uh, pricing at under $20. I think it was $19.80 or $19.70, uh, $19 a megawatt hour. So, I mean, it, it was just, Nobody expected these prices in the market, and it's a clear signal that renewable energy is highly competitive on its own. We have very clear that solar PV technology, well, obviously generates when there's sun, wind usually blows in the evening and night, so uh, we can complement very well solar with uh, uh, wind. One of the most important problems that we already have in, in the region of Oaxaca is how to launch this power to the main areas of consumption. Mexico has prepared an important bid process to have a new high voltage direct current for new transmission lines to make it possible to have energy from Oaxaca to this area in the center of the country. Afortunadamente, como digo, la energía solar puede mitigar en mucho esta esta falta de servicios de transmisión debido a la posibilidad de re relocalización básicamente en todos lados, de forma tal que en lugar de, de, de concentrar la generación en ciertos pockets, en ciertas bolsas del país, se permite una especie de generación distribuida de gran escala donde los proyectos solares se puedan mover alrededor de, 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 del territorio, minimizando el efecto sobre, sobre la red. These renewable technologies will be supported significantly by the energy storage technologies. So have regulation and proper compensation, I mean the specific tariffs for storage, for the ancillary services it can provide, as well as in some way making possible this coordination between technologies for, for different players will be very valuable for the system. We provided good platforms for where is the potential for renewables 
where it's located uh, and uh, which are the possibilities to enhance this potential. So with the uh, opportunity that we have been working, for instance, with NREL in the United States and the international cooperation that Mexico has achieved, we are providing a really important amount of information just to have a good decision, see where to invest, how to invest, and keep uh, always in mind all the restrictions that we already have in Mexico in terms of not to invest in natural protected areas, or how to deal when we have indigenous groups, how to inform to all of them the uh, impact of new projects. We already have all this information, and so I expect that Mexico probably will be one of the most important areas for new investments worldwide. According to our calculations, we think that Mexico is going to be at 50% clean energy, maybe as close as 2030, 2032, just because it makes economic sense. And in addition to this, the same trend that we observed throughout the last years, first in wind, then in solar, is something that we are seeing now in the, in the energy storage technologies. They are becoming cheaper, much more reliable, technically and economically, so they will play a very large role in supporting the system with, uh, again, a larger contribution with regards to keeping a reserve of energy itself, but also providing uh, some other services that the grid or the transmission system requires, like uh, voltage and frequency regulation to pro providing short or long-term backup, on the other hand, and as well as a very fast response for replacing other kind of thermal backups that are expensive, that uh, will use fuels like uh, diesel or, or fuel oil that are, that are expensive and that uh, pollute, so we can replace that with batteries. So, so the combination of all, the, all these technologies can solve the, 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 this uh, intermittency uh, challenge. Creo que México es un país que puede tener 100% de generación renovable. Creo que con y sin almacenamiento nos puede, México se puede permitir ese lujo. Por lo que te decía, tienes 16 horas de luz de costa a costa. 12 fijas más el desplazamiento de 4 horas eh, por la amplitud de, de la zona norte. Eh, con, la, con la bonanza de que muchos de los terrenos del norte del país son terrenos que medioambientalmente no sufren con la implantación de la energía fotovoltaica. The future of energy is electricity, without a doubt, and the future of electricity is, without a doubt, renewable energy. Before, people were still saying, well, we still have a lot of oil and we've got coal and we can keep doing this, but we shouldn't switch to renewable energies because we still have coal. Bronze era, it's not because people ran out of rocks, right? It's because you had a better technology. So that said, uh, the last auction gave us a pondered price of under $20, 1970, I think it was, for solar and wind. The cheapest price in that auction, not the pondered, was $17. Let's just round it up and say $20. So Bloomberg New Energy Finance said, well, we're looking at that by 2050, we should have a 60% drop in the cost of renewable energy. So that means that you're going to be looking at megawatts at $8, if, if, that's, if that's true, and, and they're usually on the spot. So you're looking at $8 a megawatt maybe by 2050, right? If, if, not, if not before. If that's the case, then obviously the future of energy is electricity, and obviously the future of electricity is renewable.